In this class, we will learn about uh, terminations in power, power cables. Cable terminations, uh, as you can see here. Uh, cable termination is the physical and electrical connection of a cable end that connects to another cable or to the terminal of the equipment. For example, you can see here a transmission line, um, a tower ending here. So, there are, uh, this, it is a three phase cable you can see. Three phases, this is first termination, this is another termination. This is the third termination, you can see. This construction is called uh, termination. So, cable, uh, three cables of three phases coming like this and then like this and then like this. They will be joining this transmission line here. So, this is how uh, the terminations will be. And here another example is shown here. So, this is the, uh, this is the termination construction, this one. This is the termination. So, cable is coming here and then uh, uh, this is the transmission line. So, here again uh, the another termination is there. Similarly like this. This is actually supporting insulator. Do not get confused with this one. This is supporting insulator only. To, to hold this uh, termination in position. So, this is the third case, third termination. So, these are uh, terminations. Here, another uh, three terminations are shown here, where they are connecting to uh, a <coughs> switch gear actually. So, you can see here, three cable terminations. This is entire length, you know, including this one. This is called termination. Then, uh, need for uh, field grading methods in terminations. So, there are highly stressed areas actually. You can see when the termination opens here. So, this is uh, actually termination. This is the central one is uh, the tube. Let me change the color of the pen. Pink color, red. Okay. So, you can see the, this is uh, central conductor and then this is uh, cable insulation, this portion here also. This is cable insulation, this is cable insulation and then uh, this black one, you can see here this black one. Okay, this is uh, a semiconducting sheet on cover on the cable. So, that semiconducting uh, uh, layer has to be removed. So, this all length, entire length, uh, the semiconducting layer has been removed. Why it has to be removed? Because if it is not removed, this is a high voltage, this is high voltage and if the semiconducting layer is up to this, the distance between these two is very small and there may be flash over or breakdown, whatever it is. So, <coughs> Uh, this uh, uh, cannot be opened like this. Therefore, we have to open the semiconducting layer uh, at a certain distance from the conductor opening. So, here uh, of at a certain length it is opened, but even then there is a problem. We have opened it at a particular distance, but here this is a very sharp edge as shown here in this circle, in this blue circle. So, you can see here. The field lines are shown here. Field lines at, from this sharp end uh, terminate on the conductor from various directions. So, the electric field uh, strength will be more uh, at this corner. Okay. So, this corner electric field will be very high because of the sharp edge and all. So, how to reduce? For example, this is a 20% uh, equipotential surfaces are given here. This is 20% equipotential uh, line. This is 40% equipotential line. 50% uh, 
60%, 80% and then 100% is the conduct. This is the voltage. Uh, assuming that outer voltage is ground voltage, then reduction in 20% in first this uh, equipotential line. So, you can see the equipotential lines and then the difference between equipotential lines divided by the distance is the roughly uh, the electric field at the uh, at that position. So, the electric field will be very high because of the sharp bending of these equipotential lines and then the gap between them is closer here. Uh, so, <coughs> there is a need to limit the electric field here. So, here you can see again here the picture is given here. This is cross sectional view <coughs> of this is semicon layer and then uh, this is uh, this is the conductor this is the semicon layer ok now <coughs> how the electric the simulated electric field can be seen here this is the electric field distribution ok this is the electric field so at this corner you can see clearly very high you know red color in red color indicates 1.8 above 1.8 into 10 to the power of 3 uh, kV per mm so, this is how the electric field gets uh, enhanced at the tip of uh, this semiconducting layer whenever we open and this creates the problem and often breakdown also occurs at this junction. So, we will see later. Now, how to grade the field? Now, now what is the objective is to when you uh, terminate the cable, then you have to uh, take care that you know the electric field does not incre increase and then that does not cause either de degradation or breakdown. So, you have to grade the field. So, there are the several methods actually field grading methods. You can see here um, resistive field grade grading. So, this is just you know one way of classification. There is no unique classification actually. So, we have uh, I have tried to classify it this way. So, then again capacitive field grading methods. So, in among resistive field grading method, uh, field grading again resistive grading and then non-linear uh, grading. So, these two uh, can be uh, you know classified here. In fact, this geometric field grading can also be part of the resistive field grading actually. There is uh, the act uh, there is not much difference between these two, but for the properties actually of the grading material itself. Now, uh, again then in the capacitive field grading method, we have condenser field grading, geometric field grading and permittivity grading. So, these three uh, types we can say and this geometric field grading can also be clubbed with the resistive field grading that uh, we will discuss soon. So, resistive field grading is used under steady state operation of HVDC cables or for DC cables it is used resistive field grading and capacitive field grading is used for uh, when cables are subjected to polarity reversals or in case of HVAC cables etc. So, mostly for AC. So, the field grading uh, is uh, classified here into these different categories. And then uh, let us see how each one of them is achieved. So, capacitive field grading methods first, uh, these are used for AC conditions or AC cables and very popular even for low voltage you might have already seen just uh, in the beginning of the slides I have shown those are uh, uh, those are not very high voltages the, uh, up to few kilovolts it can be used. So, now field among the field grading, the field grading with the stress cone. This is geometric uh, field grading actually. Stress cone because the you know termination appears like a cone and uh, when the field grading is done. So, the name uh, is given as a stress cone. So, here so without uh, stress cone this is the situation you can see uh, all the field lines will be originating from this position. So, very high electric field is expected in this position, high stress point. So, what is done here is, this semicon layer is coming up to here and then the semicon layer is extended like this, either in a straight line fa fashion or in a curved fashion. Sometimes, you know, it is in a curved fashion like this, it will go and then terminate like this. 
So, either in a straight line fashion or in a curved fashion. The semicon layer is uh, adjusted using, uh, is arranged using um, a construction known as co stress cone. This is, this is actually stress cone connection, this construction. This is external actually, it is not part of the cable. It is laid over the cable whenever termination is required. So, here you can see the equipotential surfaces, then just we have pulled the closest equipotential surface to a little bit far away. If we, you can see here, the equipotential surface is terminating like this, like this, see, this is like this. So, it is very close to this one, close to this one means the gap. Uh, is a small gap is small means the you know field strength is simply the voltage difference divided by gap right so if the gap is small for the same potential uh, line then the electric field will be high now by this arrangement of stress cone we are creating a artificial you know equipotential surface here so, with this equipotential surface, the semicon layer itself is an equipotential surface. So, with this equipotential surface, the next equipotential surface, this one, uh, will have, will maintain certain gap, that gap will be increased compared to, to this original gap. So, that is how the breakdown strength, uh, sorry, the electric field uh, that appears here will, in, uh, will decrease. So, we, by using of this construction known as a stress cone, stress cone connection, construction, we can achieve the reduction in electric field. So, increasing the spacing, increasing the spacing from conductor to shield uh, <coughs> spreads out uh, electric field lines. That's what, you know, spacing, spacing slowly, we increase this one. So, the from conductor to the shield and that spreads out the electric field lines and this reduces the voltage stress per unit length. This reduces the voltage stress per unit length. That is, provides additional insulation at a high stress area. So, these are all the advantages of using a stress cone or stress relief cone. Stress cone or stress relief cone. So, this is how uh, field grading is achieved by using simple stress cone. So, it is known as geometric field grading. So, again the curved one is shown here, here, here. Stress cone with logarithmic slope, stress cone with linear slope, both are depicted here. So, you can see here the stress cone or earthed screen, this is conducting actually. So, this layer will go like this in a logarithmic fashion. So, departure angle is typically, usually 3 to 7 degrees only. So, this is, uh, um, this is to be maintained in order not to increase the electric field to high value. So, the, the equipotential lines are also shown here uh, with logarithmic slope as well as, uh, you know, stress cone with a linear slope. So, these are, this is how the grading, field grading or reduction in the field is achieved. We will see the mathematical derivation soon. So, here it is given uh, the distance also, the creepage distance you can see. So, this the creepage distance is the distance from the conductor. Conductor is live, right? It is at high voltage. Uh, from the conductor to the ground one. This is the stress cone, end of the stress cone. So, from this point to this point is known as uh, creepage distance. So, additional scuds can be placed uh, over the insulation shield to increase the creepage distance. See, this, based on this uh, distance actually, the tracking etc. or you the know, flash over or failure uh, in the long run will uh, depend. So, therefore, it is important that this distance is more or see the charges from high voltage to you know this ground over the surface they will flow uh, to uh, this point you know this is at ground potential right and this is at HV. So, from HV to ground of course, uh, DC continuous charges will flow but uh, AC still some tracking might uh, happen. So, in order to 
uh, avoid this uh, you know currents leakage currents or external currents so what, uh, what is to be done here is so these constructions known as the scuds additional scuds so you might have seen on several insulator discs and all so similar construction these scuds what will happen now from here the currents has to flow uh, over the surface of like this so this will increase the creepage distance so like this uh, i am drawing the path so overall path length will increase uh, this is at ground put the black one is at ground potential so this is at ground potential so so much distance can be uh, achieved just by using some scuds uh, so this uh, uh, this is actually st stress cone and then uh, in cold shrink termination this is uh, these are called cold shrink termination there are two types actually heat shrink and cold shrink heat shrink means then uh, when we put the tube rubber tube or you know this uh, you know, polymeric tube and when we eat it, when when we sorry uh, when we um, heat it then what will happen the due to the high temperature it will uh, you know um, uh, be sticking to the surface of the uh, conductor by its it reduces its uh, dimensions diameter and then uh, gets stuck to the conductor and very closely tightly so that is heat shrink and cold shrink is simply removing some material just like elastic you know so it will come back to the normal and then it will uh, hold the conductor very tightly so these are uh, two types of heat shrink and cold shrink terminations exist even giants also exist so uh, now stress cone design so here some mathematical calculations are given here uh, you can see uh, here uh, this is a conductor radius is um, rc this is conductor radius rc and then uh, outer insulation radius normal just cable only so this is uh, ri it is denoted by ri this is uh, conductor radius is rc now it uh, just adjacent to the you know this uh, this point somewhere here it is taken it as y the vertical distance is y now the capacitance is divided into two parts actually the capacitance from stress uh, cone to the surface of the cable insulation this is insulation layer outer insulation layer is taken as cy and from this uh, outer insulation to conductor surface is taken as ci now cy can be given see by per unit length capacitance per unit length 2 pi epsilon naught into epsilon r by ln y by r i okay this is c y now c y actually the material epsilon r can be different so you now here it is assumed that material is same uh, the conductor uh, insulation as well as the outer insulation epsilon r uh, is taken as same often it happens that the cy is rubber and ci is xlp so now in this analysis we have taken it as same only epsilon r and ci similarly ci is the capacitance of the uh, this insulating layer so from conductor to the insulating layer this is 2 pi epsilon naught epsilon r divided by ln ri by rc here you can see y by ri ri means only this position position this is ri this is y right so y by ri so this additional capacitance c by is given by ratio of ln y by ri while the conductor capacitance or insulation capacitance is ri by rc rc is conductor radius ri is the insulation uh, resist insulation uh, distance or radius so now vy is simply uh, applied voltage gets distributed like this vy means y at this position this is uh, vy uh, voltage at this position vy 
v y is uh, given by 1 by c y divided by 1 by c y plus uh, 1 by c i because capacitive impedance means 1 by j omega c now. So, if you apply like that, you will get the uh, you know voltage at uh, uh, con, uh, insulation surface, this is voltage at insulation surface. Now, here you can see this is simplified v into uh, ln y by r i by ln y by r c from uh, uh, here if you substitute you will get that y by r i plus ln y by r c upon simplification you will get this one. Now, for small values of x the tangential field is given by E x comma t equals to d v y by d x or d v y by d y into d y by d x. So, if you simplify that d y by d x will come here and v by y d v by y d v y by d y uh, is uh, uh, you know if you differentiate uh, you will get if, if you differentiate this um, you will get this term. So, now at x is equal to x tends to 0 the tangential field is given by uh, uh, e 0 comma t uh, dv by dy by dx into v by y 1 by uh, ln uh, y by r c. Uh, this uh, e 0 comma t dx is equal to v by r c and r c by y ln y by r c d by. This is the tangential electric field at x is equal to 0, you can position this is this is uh, x axis, this is x is equal to 0 position, just to where the stress cone starts is taken as x is equal to 0 here. So, uh, you can see the how the uh, electric field, tangential electric field uh, appears here, otherwise the tangential electric field is 0, almost 0 other in other places. Now, here it is uh, uh, attaining some value. So, you had to uh, minimize this value to a particular value. So, uh, so that there will be no uh, damage to the uh, insulation. Now, stress cone design continuation integral 0 to x particular position x uh, e 0 t uh, dx is equal to uh, integral r i to y r i to y means as it moves from 0 to x, at, at 0 it is r i and at x it is y. So, v by r c into uh, whatever uh, previous uh, page we have derived into d y this will come. So, upon uh, integration we will get uh, this term finally uh, e to the power of g e e to the power of g e to the power of e 0 t into x by v equals to ln y by r c by divided by ln r i by r c. Now, indirectly with position y we obtained uh, a function of electric field and x. So, therefore, uh, for a for thus for a given value of tangential stress that maximum given maximum value of tangent tangential stress has to be limited otherwise breakdown will occur. So, the stress cone profile y of x can be worked out this y of x is nothing but uh, stress cone prof profile and E 0 t is the given stress x is the distance along the x axis you know uh, along the length of the cable. So, between the relation between y and x, uh, y and x is nothing but the geometry of the uh, stress cone. So, that can be determined using this formula in which E 0 t we have to give the maximum stress that uh, maximum allowable stress or uh, safe design stress you can say. So, this is how a stress cone is to be designed for um, AC purpose. Now, the similar analysis I will tell when it comes to the DC. Similarly, the stress cone can also be designed for DC. Instead of uh, for DC, instead of capacitance, you have to use resistance here. So, resistance. 
So resistance based on resistivity rho, you have to calculate and then same kind of derivation can be obtained for uh, DC case also. This capacitive case is applicable for AC and transients. Why? Just think about it. Under AC, capacitance will dominate. Under DC, uh, resistance will dominate. Because under DC, uh, capacitance will be open. When capacitance is open, it will offer high impedance. Then whatever uh, impedance is offered by the resistance will be small. Therefore, it will dominate. So, capacitors will be simply open. So, but under AC conditions, capacitors will dominate. And capacitive impedance, there is a chance under high frequency, 1 by J omega C is the impedance. So, under high frequency, the capacitive impedance becomes very small. And resistive impedance becomes very, uh, remains same, of course. So, this uh, compared to resistance, uh, capacitive impedance is small and if, if they are in parallel, whenever two, res two impedances are in parallel, the smallest one will dominate. Whenever two impedances are in series, then the largest one will dominate. So, this you have to remember. So, in this case, uh, under high frequency conditions or under AC conditions, capacitance will dominate. That is why the design here mentioned uh, an, an anal analysis of capacitance. Similar analysis can be done using resistivity and resistances. So, that can be used for uh, designing the stress cone under DC conditions. That is left for you uh, as a homework. You can do so when you may get it uh, in exams in a different way. So, uh, try to derive that and then uh, the other method is uh, permittivity based method. Permittivity, see our objective is to bend the, bend means you know, bend the equipotential line. Bend means you, you have to move the equipotential line little bit away from the uh, semicon layer which ends at the cable. So, if you can move, if you can achieve that by different methods, it is fine. So, this is another method, eight and eight another method. So, you can see the dielectric one uh, from dielectric one. So, whatever, uh, you know, electric field lines or whatever it is, they bend like this due to differences in epsilon values, epsilon value. This property can be used to uh, bend the, uh, you know, field lines in the stress cone also, without stress cone also. So, that's what is done here. Simply putting a high dielectric constant material. So, this material, so, is kept on the cable termination. Here, the stress, uh, semicon layer ends here. Semicon, this is the semicon layer, this entire, this thing, semicon layer. The semicon layer ends it. And the dielectric is kept, a layer of the dielectric is kept like this and then up to this, uh, up to certain length. Therefore, what happens is this field, the uh, equipotential line, earlier it was like this, bending like this, like this. Now, it is bent like this due to the high dielectric constant of this material. So, mastic material, what is the high dielectric constant material, known as mastic material, is used here to control the uh, stress. So, stress relief by high dielectric constant material. So, this is by means of uh, field refraction and field displacement. The equipotential lines are displaced away from the edge of the semiconducting layer of the cable. This is how the stress uh, grading is achieved or stress is reduced. Compact and does not cause additional ohmic losses. This is very compact. Otherwise, stress cone construction is a big. Of course, stress cone has to be used for higher voltages. So, here maximum field is also reduced. Only, uh, only applicable for time varying voltages, not effective for DC. So, this is what is to be noted. Uh, for DC, it is not applicable, only for time varying AC and impulse voltages, it is applicable here. So, you can see here, uh, you can see here, this is of course a giant actually. Uh, let us see. And then, um, condenser stress grading. This is the third method, condenser stress grading. 
you can see here the cross section actually you have uh, you know three conducting plates like this this is one this is another this is the third one this is the fourth one here so the first one may be connected like this and these all actually are capacitors these will form this uh, these are uh, uh, semicon uh, materials or conducting shields so what will happen they will act as capacitors actually so this is uh, that's why it is known as condenser field grading so here the equivalent circuit is given here equivalent circuit for condenser stress grading so they will act as capacitances uh, capacitances like this so the distance between these two is very small therefore these capacitances will dominate there will be capacitance from here to here also okay but compared to this capacitance, this capacitance will dominate. You can neglect this parallel branches and all. So you can uh, I make the equivalent circuit look like this. Then uh, with this equivalent circuit, the potential uh, from uh, see here uh, it is ground potential, here it is high voltage. So the potential can be graded uniformly so that the electric field is more or less uniform. So that is how it is achieved. Or in other words, if you see the equipotential lines, equipotential lines tend to terminate on the these plates, and then by that way they will have certain gap here in this place. So the gap increases, therefore the electric field decreases. This is how it is achieved. So this kind of uh, uh, stress grading or uh, field grading is known as condenser field grading. A condenser field grading can be achieved by using conductive grading layers between the ground and high voltage potential as shown above. These form capacitive dividers between ground and high voltage terminal and distribute the stress uniformly used for you know MV or HV cables up to 135 to 768 kilovolts often used in conjunction with uh, stress cone. So, the first one can be uh, stress cone. So, this is how uh, the condenser stress grading is done. So, here there is a cross section of uh, you know one termination for high voltage uh, case. In, in which case high voltage case uh, there will be external casing also like this and this uh, uh, this is uh, dielectric material, often porcelain or even nowadays polymeric uh, insulation is used. These uh, uh, skirts are used in order to increase the creepage distance as just now we discussed. So, you can see this internally inside there will be cable. So, this is a metallic uh, plate actually flange. Here uh, this is flange and then uh, you can see inside this the conductor cable will be there so this is cable actually this is cable and then there is a stress cone arrangement you can see okay and then apart from that this is again uh, solid cone only this uh, often it is a dielectric material used so this is a reflector cone it is called and, and this is flange and this is plate and then this is a cable. So, this is a cross sectional view of a typical termination. Uh, normally, terminations are vertical, it is here shown horizontal just for illustration purpose, but they will be vertical as you have seen in the first slide itself on a uh, transmission tower. So, next, uh, these are the uh, capacitive grading methods uh, given as a summary here. So, you can see here the first one is uh, uh, stress cone like this. So, here uh, they are bending. So, here first you can see the right side portion. Here you can see clearly there is no uh, without any field grading, grading method. There is no field grading here. So, you can see how sharp the field line bends here the 25 percentage of uh, field line. It will be in fact very close to this uh, semicon layer and then therefore very high stress will be there. So, in the next uh, the first one is stress cone this is you know curved stress cone you, you can see here. So, the uh, the field line uh, the sorry equipotential line is uh, maintaining some distance from this uh, stress cone 
and the 25 percent is line here you can see so this is geometric field grading even you can have the straight line uh, you know uh, linear uh, uh, stress cone also and then uh, condenser field grading is given here how this works out we have discussed just now again the field line you know uh, or equipotential line sorry equipotential line is away from this uh, corner so here uh, this is a high permittivity material again the equipotential line is uh, like this due to uh, refraction so here the schematic view of um, equipotential lines of the cable end with the different capacitive grade uh, field grading methods are shown here so this is a summary and a comparison and then we will go to resistive field grading methods under dc so actually the methods are not different materials are different here so you can see the similar stress cone method is also applicable here only that you have to design the stress cone uh, keeping in mind the resistances rather than the capacitances now this is uh, these uh, two more methods are given this is semiconductive material actually so resistive field grading means that semiconductor is used as a resistance actually so here the semiconductive material is laid here uh, like this so then uh, due to its uh, resistance so the field line the equipotential line bends like this from this corner corner means the uh, semicon layer the 25 percentage line is shown here and then 50 percent and then 75 percent so these uh, resistive field grading is uh, shown here so a semiconductive material is applied to the surface of the insulating material so what will happen similar to just as it happened in case of uh, capacitive field grading so here the resistance uh, is uniformly distributed something like this and then the voltage across the different points also varies accordingly therefore the electric field also more or less uniformly distributed due to this semiconducting material and for ac and impulse uh, impulse voltages the axial resistances and radial capacitances form rc ladder network just now we have worked out for ac but for dc voltage the capacitances do not decide here only resistances will decide so there in case of ac capacitances we have taken right here now in case of dc this will be resistances only so you have to the this is the fundamental change that is why the materials used here the tube whatever is used here must be a semiconducting tube with with appropriate resistance value so that it will uniformly you know distribute the voltage so then the field is controlled just by resistance of the semiconducting layer uh, a major advantage of the resistive field grading is a very thin layer of semiconductive material is required and the volume is also therefore extremely low so the what are the disadvantages then the disadvantages are frequency dependence of this method so the frequency dependence of this method with frequency the capacitive effects also will come into picture and the temperature dependence of the conductivity also the conductivity does not remain constant unfortunately epsilon the permittivity the variation with the field and variation with the frequency is very less but the rho the volume resistivity changes significantly with the uh, change in the temperature even one to orders also possible change in one to orders of the orders means 10 times 10 times so the difficulty of uh, the third one is difficulty of setting defined conductivities that is another problem and local overheating due to high conductivity when high conductivity material is used if there are uh, ohmic losses definitely uh, heating will occur this is another problem and here it is shown the equivalent circuit so there is a series resistance and then capacitance these parallel capacitors in the previous case we have neglected because the series capacitance will dominate there so of course uh, 
an exact equivalent circuit must also have these parallel capacitances there also but uh, the since there is capacitances dominate uh, these were those were neglected there and here you can see these are resistance these are uh, this is capacitances so like this resistance and capacitance so this is a kind of uh, uh, rc ladder network uh, of uh, you know uh, equivalent circuit so even see for ac uh, conditions you can you can you, you must use these uh, capacitances but for dc conditions you may even neglect these capacitances also uh, to some extent because they will be open so this is how the equivalent circuit can be uh, you know drawn for uh, resistive field grading and for capacitive field grading similar equivalent circuit you have to instead of in 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 addition to the series capacitances you can use these parallel capacitances also so this is how uh, we uh, uh, do the resistive field grading and the next method is uh, uh, non linear field grading so here instead of uh, semiconductive material a non linear material is used so there are certain materials known as functionally graded grading materials fgm they are very famous actually they are used in several applications in uh, uh, you know in uh, insulators actually so this non linear uh, field grading is achieved by non linear field uh, functionally grading material which can be considered as actually a variable resistors variable resistors means we do not vary them uh, by ourselves but they will change with electric field these materials have low conductivity at low fields and significantly uh, high conductivity at critical field value uh, at a critical field which is also called switching point so beyond switching point the conductivity increases like anything with electric field so it is not constant with at different electric fields it will have different conductivity that is the uh, main property of functional grading material actually so at low uh, fields the conduct uh, the materials will have low conductivity at low fields and then high conductivity at high fields that is the uh, nature of these uh, materials so they are uh, here the, in the equivalent circuit they are shown as uh, you know Uh, variable resistors actually but these variable resistors we are not varying ourselves please remember these variable resistors they change by the field itself so what is the advantage how it will achieve that uh, i will tell you just now with this uh, locally enhanced electric field can be reduced using these uh, functionally sorry functionally graded materials the electric field dependent resistance will actually help us reduce the local electric field but how this is achieved this is achieved by using the fillers such as silicon carbide zn particles embedded into the material iron oxide embedded in a base material such as polyethylene epoxy resin silicon rubber so beyond a per percolation threshold to allow continuous conductive paths so there is a certain level beyond uh, that you have to mix them and then uh, they will act as functionally graded material so this is a prototype of a dry cold string 84 kv high voltage cable termination with integrated field control based on zn o micro varistors so this is using zn o particles here so now uh, this functionally graded how it works actually very simple explanation i will give you here, i will give you here so here you see suppose uh, there is a path uh, having this uh, two three resistors something like this you can assume say any path will have uh, such a, you know you can assume like uh, having resistors actually suppose uh, in this region uh, high Uh, high field is there high field is there means the uh, for same given current uh, this is r1 r2 r3 you can see so if r1 is uh, high then the voltage drop will be more here 
and if the distance is same v by that d thickness so the electric field is also very high right now suppose if a electric field increases then r1 reduces then if r1 reduces then what will happen i into r1 v also gets reduced v decreases v goes down so since v goes down then obviously the electric field e also goes down so this is how the functionally graded materials will work so whenever there is a possibility of high electric field the resistance changes locally and the since the resistance changes locally i into r is the resistive voltage uh, drop across this resistor and that uh, v goes down since v goes down the electric field also goes down this is how the uh, functionally graded materials will work automatically it will adjust the electric field it will reduce the electric field so this is non linear uh, field grading uh, field grading of uh, terminations uh, in dc it is used so here it is given the uh, sigma and e characteristics are given so this is even used for ac applications and dc applications both actually so here uh, the first one is uh, for ac applications the second one is for dc applications here uh, you see after 10 to the power of 6 volts per meter this is this is switching point you can say so here the electric field rises like anything and then this different conductive ac conductive pulse different uh, regions are given here and here for uh, this also uh, similarly around 10 to the power of 6 the electric field rises uh, rises drastically and reduces the electric field distribution so this is how nonlinear uh, field grading is achieved uh, even those who are interested can do you know research also in this field lot of scope is there and then nonlinear field grading a simple case is given here so assuming that there is no space charge the laplacian field is obtained by solving this this is the laplace equation del square uh, phi equals to 0 and solving this you will get electric field e and let us consider a material with nonlinear field dependence so in this nonlinear field dependence actual j is proportional to v e if it is linear so nonlinear some some factor say e to the power of alpha minus 1 so when alpha is equal to 1 it is uh, 0 this factor is 0 and j is simply proportional to e that is linear material alpha is equal to 1 means linear material alpha not equal to 1 then nonlinear now nonlinear field graded material uh, uh, field can be ca found from the current continuity equation del dot j is equal to 0 from that you can obtain the electric field distribution actually now after obtaining the electric field the field grading factor is decided as defined as like this field grading nonlinear field divided by laplacian field simple nonlinear field divided by laplacian field electric field the field grading factor is a function of alpha actually and uh, insulation radius also conductor radius also if alpha is equal to 1 then the material is linear and no field grading is observed so the conductivities of FGM are tuned according to the regions that are determined by nonlinear field. So based on the regions, uh, we will see the uh, where the electric fields are high. There, the functionally graded materials can be uh, used to reduce the electric field. And uh, these are uh, here paper insulated uh, cables are given here. So the only difference is say, for uh, XLPE cables, we will have simply uh, plastic tubes available. They can be either uh, heat shrink or cold shrink tubes can be simply put on the surface and all. But for uh, this paper insulated uh, cables, actually uh, this uh, stress cone construction can be obtained uh, by using paper tapes. These are all tapes you can see. So, uh, these are uh, the insulating tapes. So, here uh, stress cone insulation is, uh, you know, uh, put on the cable, paper cable, uh, using these tables. This, this is cable insulation itself, means paper insulation. This is stress cone insulation, 
using some external tapes bound on that. And here, uh, stress cone insulation, above that there is grounded shielding of, uh, shielding braid, uh, the copper material is used. So, this is, this is actually, instead of semicon material, it is here, copper braid. So, cable shielding tape is uh, used here. So, the shielding will continue up to this, up to this. Okay. Now, here you can see, this is uh, uh, without stress cone and this portion is with stress cone. So, the bending of the uh, equipotential lines you can see and the uh, distance also increases here. Therefore, the electric field effectively in this portion gets reduced. So, this is how the paper insulated lead cover, lead is you know, uh, you know conducting material actually, lead covered cable terminations are done. So, insulation tapes are wrapped to obtain conical shape. Okay, the copper braids are wrapped to extend the insulation shield over the cone. So, this is this is copper tape up to this, it is extended by uh, wrapping the uh, copper braids. And then filling material must be compatible with the insulating material in case of uh, MV, HV and uh, HV cable terminations. The filling material, the material, whatever you are using, the insulating material tapes, they must be compatible with, otherwise there will be interfacial fields and then breakdowns, etc. So, this is how a paper cable is terminated. And here, uh, this is uh, an example, gas filled uh, 3 core uh, PILC cable terminations. In this case, you know, gas, SF6 gas. So, SF6 gas is a, you know, very good insulator. Uh, of course, uh, it is now increasingly recognized as not to be used because greenhouse gas. So, but um, it is inevitable to increase the uh, dielectric strength. We have to go for uh, SF6. One of the advantages of using gases is if there is some internal flashover, automatically uh, it will uh, readjust. So, because it is gas. If it is solid insulation, then it will have permanent failure, but it, if it is gaseous insulation or liquid insulation, then it will again regain the strength. So, that is one of the advantage. So, the construction is shown here. So, in order to increase the dielectric strength of the outside uh, dielectric, so this is how gas is uh, filled inside. Here, um, uh, you can see uh, aerial lugs here outside lugs, factory soldered giants, uh, these, these are factory soldered uh, giants, this also, this also. And you can see the structure actually, this is a porcelain um, insulator, of course polymeric also can be used. Uh, these uh, scuds are used the same in order to increase the creepage length again. So, here in, internally you can see the structure, how it is, uh, you know, the terminated and all. Field wiped joints, 3 by 8 inch gas supply uh, tubing. This is the gas supply uh, tubing. And then 3 conductor cable gas feed tube. Here it is the gas feed tube and uh, T fitting and then tube to gas supply to cylinder. This will go to uh, gas supply cylinder. So, this is how uh, the PLA, PILC uh, cable is uh, terminated. Three conductor PILC termination is shown in this figure. Next, uh, the XLP cable termination. So, here it is uh, shown, the cross section is given here. So, you can see the uh, actual XLPA termination here. So, at this end where the lug is used to connect the uh, high voltage, here there is moisture blocking mastic is used. It is a material which will swell when it uh, touches with the moisture and then thus blocking the moisture entry into the cable. This is very, very important. Otherwise, moisture will enter into the conductor and it may cause breakdown at any way, any place. But uh, the water trace known as, uh, you know, 
triggering channels uh, from the conductor to insulator uh, may happen uh, due to this moisture what are trees we will learn later so some small structures like triggering structures and they will ultimately cause cause the breakdown so those will occur inside the uh, uh, cable med insulating material so that's why we have to avoid the moisture entry into the cable therefore the termination outer end you must use this moisture blocking mastic and then uh, stress grading cone uh, is shown here uh, and then uh, stress control tube is also used here you can see here and then silicon grease is laid on the surface and then uh, uh, stress control mastic is used here this is functionally graded material again stress control mastic so this is a typical uh, xlp cable termination let us see this uh, video actually born out of our unparalleled experience in the development of cold shrink technology this fully integrated premium cable termination offers the greatest simplicity and flexibility in our range. Our premium termination covers a wide range the of outer cable layer should be and ground potential. as well as accommodated voltages up to 69 kV. Therefore, Shorter installation lengths enables this product to, to fit into a wide range of boxes and fewer installation steps means there's a lot less room for joint error. To install, a layer of Scotch Seal 5313 mastic tape is applied around the cable sheath. For each core, the earthing braid is then positioned and fixed in place with a constant force spring. The earthing braids are then pushed into the mastic and secured by a constant force spring. A second layer of Scotch Seal 5313 mastic is then applied over the braid. The mastic, constant full springs and earthing braids are overtaped by a layer of PVC tape to avoid the cold shrink breakout boot from sagging. Cold shrink breakout boot is then positioned and installed. With no requirement for heat or tools, a quicker, easier, and more consistent installation is made possible. This is cold shrink breakout boot. see how it is shrinking as it is. Rejacketed sleeves are then slid over each core and onto the breakout boot to create a seal. This sleeve is supplied on a roll and is cut to length for each core. This enables the installer to adjust the total installed length of the termination. A layer of copper tape is then applied to fix the copper screen in place. This is copper screen with copper tape. A layer of PVC tape is then applied over the rejected sleeve and copper tape. Conductive layer and XLPE insulation are removed. The lug is then installed. The cold the termination body is then the positioned and installed. Of These products are cold applied and therefore quicker, easier, and safer to install than heat this shrink is, alternatives. Uh, and they are also ideal where hot work permits are difficult to obtain. Termination body. Cold shrink. As you remove the inner portion, so you can see how it is shrinking there. That the arrow is moving. Up. So it is. It will be very. 
Okay, that should. So this is how termination is done. Now these are uh, terminating lugs. Lugs uh, actually connect the cable in a termination to another electrical device and must be able to carry normal and emergency currents and must provide good mechanical connection. Uh, so, you must be able to carry in the normal and emergency currents and must provide good mechanical connection, must seal out water from that cable. See, for example, even if one ohm contact resistance is there, you assume 500 amperes of currents. So, 500 watts will be generated. Actually, it is huge if continuously 500 watts is generated. It uh, acts like a heater and then lot of heat generation will be there. So, this is the portion lug whatever I am talking now, the last portion. So, these must provide good mechanical connection and must seal out uh, water from the cable. You can see here. So, there is a gasket seal at the bottom also and then uh, this uh, lug itself the construction you can see here there will there cannot be any water see here so this tube is hermetically sealed nothing can enter through this side okay so water cannot enter through this side so it should be like that otherwise moisture entering into the conductor will also damage the insulation so this care uh, is taken for lugs this is one type of uh, termination connecting and then there are other connections, separable connectors. These are not like lugs actually. So, lugs need to be permanently fitted by you know using nuts and bolts. But here this can be uh, removable. So, just by pulling this hook, so this uh, known as pulling eye, here in the diagram also you can see the pulling eye. So, by just pulling it back, you can remove the connection. So, it can be used as a switch also. So, this is uh, known as separable connectors or these are also called elbows. Elbows. So, here this is a uh, unlike lugs, these are fully shielded and can be uh, operated as a switch. So, here whatever is shown is of 200 amperes, uh, 5 to 15 kilovolts load break elbow. So, you can use it as a switch. So, using a pulling eye you can easily remove and then uh, see various parts are shown here. Uh, so, this is about uh, this uh, 200 amperes uh, load break elbow and uh, high voltage and extra high voltage termination. So, you can see here uh, there are three uh, cross sectional views are given of course, uh, but for the little difference all are same only. So, here uh, at the outside this is uh, either polymeric material or uh, uh, you know porcelain material or epoxy type material. This is insulator actually that grey color is insulator. So, uh, that uh, the brown color that is insulator and here at the bottom the cable you can see and here this is a flange and then uh, there is a plate also and it is uh, you know it can be tightened by nuts and bolts. So, here this top portion from this onward and the inner portion is uh, uh, actually cable here the semicon is removed you can see clearly and uh, uh, the stress cone arrangement is also shown the white portion uh, it is actually rubber and inside this uh, gap there will be either sf6 gas or silicon oil uh, that will be filled so inside this tube that will be there so this is uh, about uh, this thing and then uh, even epoxy uh, resin can also be used for this outside tube. Here this is uh, porcelain and then this is uh, epoxy resin. So, and inside the stress cone you can see clearly the cross section is shown in this diagram. So, in the uh, previous diagram also the th white one internal structure uh, does have similarly actually. So, this stress cone uh, the black portion are seen here. So, this white one also exactly same 
but here this is a uh, this is a cut view or cross sectional view is shown to understand again here oil or sf6 is, can be filled inside so this type of uh, construction is used for uh, termination of uh, gas insulated substation cables so this is about this thing other cross section other uh, cross section also shown here uh, this here you can see even stress cone very clearly this is again cross section only so uh, the white portion is uh, insulation and this this black portion is a semiconducting material and the uh, uh, stress cone structure is clearly shown here so and then uh, uh, this is polymer cable and then insulating compound is either uh, sf6 or uh, oil that is filled in the gap okay then this is outside outside insulator which can be porcelain material or polymer material or epoxy type material and then uh, these fins uh, these uh, fins are uh, skirts are used for creepage distance and here corona shield the electrode the shape the, it is aluminum electrode only so here the shape is uh, to increase the radius of curvature and to reduce the corona and here the terminal stud is there which is uh, used for connections. Then uh, this is a uh, HVDC cable termination 525 kV. You can see it is very huge structure. Actually, you can also see the corona shield uh, electrode at the top and its size and uh, radius etc. which is uh, for 525 kilo volts. And some more videos are there, high voltage cable termination, you can see this is uh, one of the videos how the termination is uh, made in a uh, factory before uh, installation. Now ABB is Hitachi ABB now actually. So you can see semicon layer is removed from this portion, the white portion. So this is uh, the pre-assembled unit actually, main body. This is uh, this is not porcelain. This is polymeric material actually. The tube is polymeric material. You can see it is bending when tightening with rope. So this is polymeric plastic material. This arrangement is just to insert. After that, it will be removed. These plastic ones. Uh, this is a stress cone arrangement actually. Internal structure will also be shown in the video. Uh, this is internal cross sectional view. The tube whatever is inserted now will look like this. Now they are removing these things. The connection should be very, very strong. The contact resistance should be very small. Otherwise, it will lead to huge uh, heat dissipation there and then the temperature may rise abnormal thousands of amperes
this is uh, another video So this is Today we will discuss uh, about 220 kV cable and its termination. Usually for high voltage transmission, we see overhead lines with tall towers. But these tower lines have some disadvantages such as high capital cost and need huge space for tower erection. So to overcome these problems cables are used instead of overhead lines. Initially cables were limited to low voltage levels only. But due to technology advancements, cables are used for high voltage transmission also. Now let's see advantages of cable as compared to overhead lines. One as we already discussed, cables require less capital cost and space as compared to overhead lines. Two since cable laying is done underground, unlike overhead lines there are no faults due to climate abnormalities, such as high speed wind, tree fall, heavy snow or rainfall. Also there are no faults due to bird interventions, hence fault frequency is very less as compared to overhead lines. 3. Energy loss in transmission gets reduced relatively. For most important maintenance of cable is very easy as compared to huge overhead transmission lines in their towers. Hence nowadays cables are preferred for transmission purpose instead of overhead lines. So let's start with high voltage transmission cable. Here an example of 220 kV cable is discussed. As we can see here, this is 220 kV line bay, at the other end of this bay cable termination is done. At a glance, this is how 220 kV cable termination looks like, now starting with identification of termination components. These are three silicon rubber oil filled bushings, main part of cable termination. At the top of all three bushings are YB phase conductors of bay are connected respectively. And from the bottom of bushings these main power cables go underground. As we can see in picture these bushings are mounted on bottom plates which are fitted on vertical structure. If we look at the bottom of bushings, we can see cable gland, main power cable, bulb out for bushing oil drainage and small cable for earthing purpose. This small earthing cable is connected to earthing strip through link box. Link box is used for earthing and bonding cable sheets of single core cable in order to eliminate or reduce induced voltages in circulating currents. Hence it plays very important role in cable termination. As shown in diagram on link box, there is a detachable link provided inside. Now, if we look at the cable gland, this is how it looks before fitting. Cable run through this gland, and these three braided conductors are connected to earth and cable. As we can see, this whole cable termination process is carried out in air conditioned enclosure, so as to create desired environment condition. Purpose of cable termination is to connect cable with another equipment or devices. 
In this case, cable termination is done to connect cables with bay conductors. Apart from this, there are many different types of cable terminations. So guys, this is all about 220 kV power cable termination. Now such terminations are also used uh, in laboratories for uh, testing the cables. You can see here one termination at one end of the cable uh, and this is uh, one termination and there is another termination at the other end of the cable and there is a cable here and some accessories are also uh, used here. So these two terminations are connected actually using a uh, you know conductor rigidly and there should be very less contact resistance and you can see test objects you know uh, test object means this is joints actually so joints are part of this uh, test loop uh, which I, which is used in the laboratories cable joints and terminations so these are all used and there is a uh, certain uh, requirements for the length actually this is 5 meters and then a giant and then again 5 meters cable between the giants and then uh, uh, yeah this 5 meters 5 meters and then again uh, 10 meters minimum so these are minimum distances it can be more than this but minimum is this much but there is uh, uh, some uh, distance in the accessories also 0.5 meter about 0.5 meter giant length and here at the bottom of this also around 0.5 length 0.5 meter length uh, is used for uh, this uh, termination so that apart from that these uh, lengths should be uh, 10 meters and uh, 5 meters etc uh, so these are uh, certain uh, uh, case uh, reports actually failures which occur at uh, triple junction breakdown uh, you can see this uh, the this is actually a hard research topic you can see exactly at the junction of these three materials semiconductor and then xlp there is a breakdown hvdc terminations are not actually perfect until now uh, research need to be done for these even for ac also a uh, lot of failures occur at uh, these uh, triple junction uh, breakdown the, uh, the triple junction and you can see here all breakdowns are reported at uh, triple point region only in this figure 